Hello everyone, and today I have a Medolce date profile for you for May of 2015. I have edited this build a lot over the years, uh, not over the years, over the months I meant to say, sorry about that. I've only been playing the game for a few months. Uh, my friend got me back into it when I went over to the card shop. I used to play this when I was a kid, and uh, short story, um, I bought my very first pack, and it was a Return of the Duelist pack, and I pulled a Medolce Magellan is my first ever holo, um, getting back into the game, and I just really liked the artwork, I really liked the effect that the card had, so I decided to look into the deck, and I ended up building this as my very first competitive deck, and um, I have edited this build a lot. Um, I've edited it uh, many, many times over the months, I've bought tons of cards and, and just sold them because I didn't like how they worked, and I do have another build coming that I will show off whenever I get all the cards for it, but for now this is the build that I use on my locals. I do pretty decently there, um, I got second place one time, and um, I place pr pretty well usually. Um, we have Necroz, Satellar Knights, Heroes, which is a really bad matchup for Medulces I feel. Um, Black Wings, we have a lot of um, really good decks and a lot of like road decks and in between decks, Melodious, etc. But the Necros and uh, Satellar Knight players are the ones that give me the most trouble. Um, Satellar Knight specifically. I find that Necros is a little bit easier on Medolce than Satellar Knights because Satellar Knights just stop everything that you do and it's really, really irritating. But yeah, enough with the talk. Uh, let's, let's get into this deck profile. I will be going over my main, extra, and my little side deck. My side deck is still growing. I didn't really develop that when I was building my main deck for the first time, so I'm just now getting around to that. But for the monsters, we have the Staples 3 and Jelly. This is your main combo piece. Um, if you have uh, all three of them banished, you basically can't play. <laughs> she is absolutely the best card in the deck. And if you don't have her, um, good luck, uh, because it's going to be a struggle. 3 Magellan, because she searches out your Angelis or your Muse if you already have one. Or what other other whatever other card you may need, and sometimes I'll even a special into her with Tiaramisu's effect for a 1900 beater, which is really nice. Two hoot cake. I thought three was too cloggy, and I don't know why everyone runs three because I I uh I actually where is it? I I side out a hoot cake in case I need it because uh, I'll explain why later. But if you don't run what I run in my side deck, you might want to just run two hoot cake because he really isn't that great at three. Two Mew because while this is a great great combo starter and just a great card in general you can search it out really easily so you don't really need three. Two Mesa Gelato because you don't want three because you never want to draw into it but you don't know but you don't want one because you can't really do as many um, combos with just one I find and I feel a lot more comfortable with two. Two effect veilers for a hand trap uh, pretty, uh, it doesn't really need any explanation, I find. <laughs> that card is just great at stopping plays. Two max C for draw power. Also a hand trap, another hand trap, supposed scarecrow. Spell striker to extend plays. I just run the one because I don't really find, uh, two necessary because I, I also want to run other cards. And one ghost trick Jack Frost stop OTKs. Uh, what he does is that whenever your opponent declares a direct attack, you can um, special summon him from your hand in face down defense position and flip the monster that attacked in face down defense position. So um, he can help you like, live longer. And that's it for the monsters. So let me pick those up. It's all messy. Oh well. For the spells, we have two chateau and two ticket, which is the perfect ratio in my opinion. Um, with one ticket and three chateau, I did not feel comfortable, and the other way around, I also did not feel comfortable. I like to run two, but I don't like to run three because they're really easy to search out. Three upstart goblin for consistency, three MST because back row destroys this deck, and for the one-ofs, we have Raigeki and Dark Hole for monster destruction, Book of Moon because it's a staple, and Double Summon because if you draw into this card, and you have combo pieces and you have extras in your uh, hand, you can really, really go off. I've drawn into this on the first turn and I have won because of it. Uh, this card is just so good, but I really don't want to run more than one because I would rather run other cards in uh, that place. Like the three upstar goblin and the three MST, etc. And for the traps, we have a very little but very basic and powerful trap lineup. We have two traps done, 
to so we can get our plays off. One bottomless. Vanities, mirror force, torrential, and breakthrough. These are all staples. These are all really powerful traps. They're never a dead draw, and they always help me out. So yeah, I don't like to run a lot of traps because I find that if you run a lot of traps, the deck slows down, and I don't like this deck when it's slow. But you can. There's, I have nothing against it. It's just that I don't like the slow format of that. And for the extra deck, hang on one second. Where's my drink? Sorry about that. For the extra deck, rank fours, we have two Tiramisu. Absolutely the best card in this entire deck. She's the whole reason why I run this deck. This card is my favorite card, and she's just so powerful. One 101, because he's just really, really powerful. He can um, just help you just take your opponent's boss monsters really easily and just help you win duels. One Castell to get rid of the troublesome cards that you can't get rid of uh, other ways. Cowboy, Blade Armor Ninja for uh, game finishers and OTKs, Excalibur, staple. You can get him out really rarely, but when you do get him out, it's great. Downer Magician to make your uh, rank 3s useful after you've used their effect, like um, Levier and MX Saber Invoker. Abyss Dweller for the last rank 4, just because this card is an instant win against certain decks I've found, I found. And I want to put this back in the correct order. Rank 3s, we got 2 Levier. You need 2 Levier so you can do your um, biggest combo twice in one game. One Ghost Trick Alucard, he's basically an MST that does 1800 damage. Um, you can also use him to get rid of set monsters, so he's pretty awesome. Wind up Zen Mains, he helps you stay in there. Number 49 Fortune Tune does the same thing. And one Naturia Beast, this is uh, an interesting be uh, thing to put in here because a lot of you will say, well you can't even run this card. Yeah, I can't yet. Um, I needed a placeholder because I don't have my MX Saber Invoker yet. And, or my instant fusion targets, which I will get to later. And um, I will plan. I'm plan on using um, TG Striker and TG Werewolf later, which will help me go into this guy. And he's just an awesome, awesome, awesome card. And I'm really excited to run him. I just I don't have the cards. I don't have all the cards that I am eventually going to run yet. So I just put him in here as a placeholder because I don't have the four cards I actually need. If that makes any sense. And for the side deck, it's small, but it's growing. We got all these tokens out of here. Three Ghost Trick Jiangxi and three Ghost Trick Mary. Um, the Ghost Trick engine is really fun, uh, but it's really slow. What you do is you hopefully draw into uh, this guy, and then you will set him down if you have nothing else. And then when you get attacked, you flip him up, and then you search out a Mary. And then when you take damage, you discard Mary, and then you special summon another one of these. And they just help you... Uh, pre prevent OTKs and um, they also are, are sh actually really good for getting through your deck because um, when you use their effects you have to discard Mary and Jiang she goes to the grave usually because she usually dies from getting attacked after being flipped and um, they'll always be in the grave so Hootcake will be alive which is why I side in a Hootcake whenever I run these and um, they help you get through your deck faster because there's six of them and they search each other out over and over and over so they help you get th they help you dig through your deck really fast I just breathed really fast there, that felt weird sorry about that um, th they help you dig really really fast and they are always live hook cake targets it's pretty great but it's also really slow which is why I only run it every now and then and then one instant fusion I'm waiting on two more um, and I'm also waiting on my instant fusion targets, uh, which are Fusionist and Carbonala Warrior. I should have them next week, and then I will make another deck profile, hopefully, next month. And I'll let you guys know how that build has been working out for me. That has been my Badolce deck profile. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I will be making another one soon. Hopefully, whenever I get all the cards I need, like MX Saber Invoker, as I've said before, Fusionist, Carbonala Warrior, uh, TG Striker, TG Warwolf, um... And hopefully a Dolce Pudding Sess. I'm going to play around with her and put her on my side. Oh, and my two instant fusions. Let me, let me know what you guys think. Post your builds below and just uh, have a good day.